All right, we're live. Um, so about an hour and a half behind our agreed upon schedule, which is quite common. But I'm here with Christo, my man, my fragrance snob, fellow fragrance snob. I don't want to say niche anymore because I can't say I'm a complete niche snob. Yeah, I, we're getting more and more um, politically correct with our terminology as we go along. And yeah, it's kind of the same thing because... I always used to say, but I think it kind of is like, it's like niche snob as in we're kind of embracing this term that's meant to be like an insult. Right. You know what I mean? Because nobody says a fragrance snob really, right? Everyone's yeah. like niche snob, you're niche snob. It's like, yeah, I am. I'm Which gonna, is I'm quite funny because, you know, the majority of my collection are designer exclusives more so than niche, you know. Designer yeah. exclusives are really my thing where designers have really fell off the map for me, especially the the modern mainstream, easily accessible things that all kind of smell like uh, don't do it for me. It's it's the exclusives that I love. Uh, agreed. I agree. But I guess, again, kind of, you know, with that kind of old like um, incorrect terminology, most people consider the Chanel Lays exclusives does uh, niche still, right? You know, there's still that kind of um, group of people that still use that terminology. Right. They can go either way. Yeah. I'm just going to set up here so I can, I always have trouble with the comments and we'll yeah, get to your, your icon, your pictures turn into your icon, your avatar. So I'm not sure if people are seeing you as the avatar or people are seeing you live. You just kind of, turned into that really suddenly your avatar so i'm not well we'll give people a minute to come on um how's your day been so far it's um, been crazy actually the weather here it's got like uh multiple personalities it started off you know cloudy and then the sky is opening up and then we've had some flurries of snow yeah, it sounds very similar to here. I think I texted you that this morning, but you were, I think you were. There was one moment morning. where it was a complete whiteout. Like it was just snowing so hard and you couldn't even see like outside. All you could see is white. Oh, I definitely have. We didn't get anything that bad. And now but there's I, like no snow on the ground either. Can you see me? No, no, I can only see your avatar. I can't see you at all. This is really strange. And I'm not I'm sure on, what is going on. Yeah, so on the uh, the chat when I tune in, yeah, it just shows you as an avatar. I don't know how to fix that unless we start all over again. I've never seen that before, to be honest. So I don't know what's going on. So when we got when we when I first called you, were you able to see me? Yeah, it was just up until you said like I'm gonna go do whatever, whatever, and then you were gone. Weird. Um, well, why don't you kind of play around with that and then I'll, I'll, I'll get to some comments. Um, MT, I'm still waiting for a review of Nautica Voyage, he says to you. Oh, are you there? What's going on here? <laughs> Give me a second here. Sob replay. Love, love, love your work, big pimp. <laughs> um, Frank Hansen saying hi. Beef Curtain saying sup niche snobs. Um, Ryan sent to the day is Giacomo de Giacomo or Giacomo de Giacomo, however it's pronounced. Jeremy Hines watching from uh, Eastern Ontario. I'm saying that he's not. Okay, it looks like I'm back. Oh, there you go. Yep, you are. I'm not sure what happened, but doesn't really matter. What's up, uh, Heinz? Um, Andy from Berkeley. Looks like our whack pack is back in the house. Rocky Malamute. Hello from Beef Spain. Curtains. I see Beef Curtains is here. Let's yep. take a second. Arnold's in the house. Good dunk. A lot of familiar names. Rich Mitch, Frank Hansen, Robert Pericone, Stefan Fragrance. 
Um, all names that look familiar. Yaroslav in Poland. What's Liev, Raza, what's up, Raza? Brady. I'm seeing a lot of good sense of the day, which yeah. I really uh, appreciate and enjoy. Uh, I am working on a mic today. Let me know how I sound. So I might be a little bit different than normally. Edwin. Edwina, Samantha sorry. Ferrari, snobby bitch and proud. <laughs> Where is that? I didn't see that. I had to. It actually showed up in like a hidden box. I had to unmute, unmute it. <laughs> so every time I guess a swear word comes on, it. it oh, it right, right. It just sees that word. Right. I have to uh, unblock it. Which I did, because I know she's not a troll. Um, okay, so why don't you give us a little intro? So, of course, we are just going to, you know, kind of talk and randomly uh, just go from topic to topic and comment to comment. But our ongoing theme is going to be. Well, yeah, we're going to have we're going to be doing our favorite spring fragrances. And this is quite rare because I don't think I've ever done a favorite spring fragrance list. And I know I've never done one live. And if if I if I do do one, it's usually with you, and it's it's not live; it's pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. And I, I I specifically do want to mention something, and I I've I've kind of nagged about these ongoing top ten lists, these top ten best lists, and I think a lot of people have actually misunderstood me i don't have a problem with top 10 lists or, or or favorite lists i actually enjoy them but when you take it to a point of you know doing them over and over and over and that's all your channel's filled with it does get a little bit obnoxious and monotonous and it, it certainly loses a lot of interest for me anyway yeah i i mentioned that kind of in my hidden reply on a live stream you know kind of after the fact and i mentioned that and i've because I know you as well. We both talked to this about this privately, you know, person to person via text message on live streams in videos. We like top 10 videos. We enjoy watching them. We enjoy doing them. We enjoy putting them together. We enjoy collaborating on them. But yeah, exactly what you just said. When when that's all you're doing and that's the only way you can bring credibility or not even credibility, but can bring um, traffic to your channel, then that's the problem. When you're just doing the same list over and over and just changing a couple things here and there. That's the problem. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you'll see, I've, I've seen, you know, top five, top 10 lists come out like three, four, five days consecutively. And if you think about it, this person is literally um, showing 50 perfumes in their videos in five days in a row. How long does it actually take you to get to know 50 perfumes? It would take me well over three years to review 50 perfumes. And uh, I just think it's a little too much. Yeah, that's, again, you know, I'll pop up with the top 10 list now and again, but it's it's kind of why I, I don't really do many reviews. I'm just kind of, I don't want to force things. I don't want to do things that I'm not ready to do because it just kind of puts It just kind of cheapens your channel, I believe. Yeah, it just kind of discredits your your views, your opinions, when you're reviewing things that you're not familiar with, that you're not competent with, that you're not properly putting the time and effort into rather than, you know, again, just putting it out there to have it out there. That race to be the first kind of thing that I think you and I have mentioned numerous times as well. People just want their name attached to the newest thing. Yeah. So anyways, um, enough of that. Let's uh, let's do some picks. And these aren't in any order, right? We're just going to go kind of back and forth. Yeah, I'm still kind of setting up here. I'm, I'm, I'm very lost. This isn't my thing here. Do you want to go ahead? Dude, don't. We're not going to do reviews. We're just going to take something out, talk about it for a couple minutes, and then just kind of let some dialogue ensue and field some questions. Like, don't worry about perfumers and years and notes. Just tell me what you're... I'm kind of taking yeah, no. I'm just kind of setting up my camera and my 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 stuff here. Oh, I thought you're getting your. But you go ahead. Okay. Do you have any honorable mentions? Because I do have do, a bunch. I'm gonna do my send to the day first, actually, because we haven't done that yet. We kind of got a bit sidetracked. Um. So, like Eugene mentioned, we don't live that far apart. Maybe forty minutes as the crow flies, kind of thing. Um. 
Uh, so we had kind of similar here. When I woke up this morning, it was gorgeous. It was beautiful. The sun was shining. It was warm. You could actually feel some heat through the windows from the sun. Um, went in, had a shower, got out of the shower, and it's kind of getting dark, kind of getting cloudy. Like, okay, what's going on here? So get dressed, start getting ready to go out, run some errands, do some stuff. And um, it starts snowing. And it's just like, what the hell is going on here? This is just crazy. So something I figured would kind of cover all those bases and that I haven't worn in a long, long, long time is um, Lardisons Volier de Roses. I um, I love this. I, I, I'm i such a fan of Lardisons. I know they've made some junk and I know they're kind of catering to the Sephora market now. Um, but I think this is a really great house that's just widely accessible and just so affordable, especially when you're looking at like discount uh, discounters in gray market, which pretty much almost everything they have in production, you can find for like half price, you know? Yeah. I kind of regret not getting into that brand, especially when the older bottles were available. I was just yeah. kind of, you know, always had some, some of my own things on the go with Chanel and Guerlain. I didn't really pay attention to that brand. And now that I have gotten to learn and uh, study their stuff, I, I think it's like a little bit too late to, um, it's getting harder and harder to find those original bottles. Yeah. And as well, I should say, I really don't, I, this is my favorite style of bottle. I don't really like the earlier ones than this. And I, I really don't like the new ones, like the gray with like the black caps or whatever. Yeah. I've never actually held one in my hands. So I don't know if they still have like the really nice metal caps um, or, you know, whatever, if they're that different, but um, I just like these. I think aesthetically, these are really, really nice looking bottles with like the, I don't know, Octagon, I guess. I think they're a really good bang for their buck, that brand. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's some stuff from them I don't like um, or that's not really interesting. But a lot of it, I think, is just really, really solid. You've um, actually worn a lot of that. And I remember when you bought that. Yeah, I bought it about back. three years now. Did I get this in Indonesia or in Canada? No, no, you got okay. that here. And it was did just I? like when we first started speaking, you got that. And yeah, then when you did pick it up, you were kind of like, you weren't really sure how you felt. And and then it kind of grew on you more and more. Is that wow, your scent so, yeah. of the day? Yeah, that's what I'm wearing now. I did put on a good bit of it. Um, more than I tend to usually. All right. Well, I'll yeah, share I'm my awesome. scent of the day. I'm not wearing anything right now. But, oh, wow. you know, I, I have went and I had breakfast with the family, gone for a nice haircut. I had to pick up some new safety boots for work. Um, just that kind of stuff. Ran some errands. But I, I did wear this. And this is L'Ombre de Merveille. Oh, it looks like it's Midnight got, in Paris at first. Exactly. Yes. The bottles are very, very similar. It's got that that constellation of stars. And it's just a gorgeous bottle. And... uh there's about four of these in the line. And then there's a couple of limited editions and there actually might be some more and um, they're all very quite similar. And it's just a kind of a classic take um, that Hermes, it's kind of like a Hermes signature. Uh, if you've smelt ombre Nargole, I think this is very similar to that. It's just not as complex or rich or, extravagant it's almost like an ombre nargole junior i find find it like ombre nargole goes to night school let's let's say you know so i mean this is a lot easier to find and if if you haven't smelt ombre nargole and you get your nose on this it's it's almost like you know they're they're definitely got a lot of similarities so it's very sweet um a lot of vanilla and, and and incense. It's got that ambergris, that woody ambergris thing going on. It kind of dries down to this, almost like this, this sweet cookie vibe, this sweet vanilla cookie. Wasn't it? I remember it being at the, the Hermes counter. And if you ever want to run into like really, really intelligent, like well-versed um, sales associates, I think like an official Hermes counter is the place to go. Yeah, there's some of the best. Like Hermes really invest a lot of time and money into training them. And I remember one of them was talking about it being one of, if not the first like women's fragrance to not use florals or something exactly. like that. Okay, yeah. so that is true. Yeah, that's true. Wow. Awesome. 
I need to try it. I've tried it numerous times, but I think there were other women's fragrances by her mess that I was so much more captivated with um, that I kind of put that in the wayside, but um, I'm, I'm definitely going to check that out again. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I love it, especially for, you know, the colder weather. Okay. Do you have any um, honorable mentions that you quickly want to fly well, through? Let's go into this and it kind of like an unofficial video. Let's talk a little bit about springtime in our part of Canada, springtime notes, springtime vibes, springtime auras. What do you kind of get from that? Well, we spend about half of our spring just waiting for the snow to melt. Uh, we have lots of rain. You know, the air is crisp. It's cool. It's damp. Um, and so come spring, I'm really looking to get away from those heavier, denser fragrances. I want a lot of florals. And if I can't get florals, I want a lot of greens or woods, uh, some freshness. And when I say florals, I'm not talking about, you know, those heavy rose or... um jasmine scents i'm talking like let's say lilies or you know just really fresh fresh clean flowers iris maybe let's say something like that orange blossom i'm looking for something uh maybe citrusy just not anything you know damp dirty dark like no ouds or anything like that but that's not to say i can't because I, I can't wear those because these are basically, it, this is just like not a video of things that I'm going to necessarily wear every single day or um, wear the most of. These are just things that I think are the ideal spring perfumes. Okay, so you said something there that I really liked um, that I think really resonates with me as well, that this is the kind of time where you're just sick and tired of wearing heavy, dense, thick, sweet smoky fragrances not that there's anything bad with them but i've been wearing those for like four months straight five maybe even six months straight at this time of year and yeah i want to get something fresh and clean and floor and that's kind of why i wore this although i wouldn't say this is like an archetypal um spring fragrance it's just something i've been dying to wear for like four or five months since it's been like minus 10 minus 15 minus 20 25 whatever whatever this doesn't really do well i don't think it complements that weather really well so yeah i think that's a really really good point that you made there and i just saw uh, a comment from mark um robes 08 he said uh her mess is like the fragrance of spring yeah fragrance brand of spring which reminds me i forgot to bring up an honorable mention so let me mention it right now um uh i'll start if you don't mind um iris or iris ukoyi um from the hermescence line i picked up a bottle a couple years ago in a swap and i just love and adore it i just can't get enough of it i love the kind of plasticky um waxy iris in it it's again you kind of mentioned um ambre nargi or um uh omar vle as like the older sibling of Ambre Nargui, right? Yeah. So I kind of see that Iris Ukoyi and Iris, yeah, you know, like the one in the standard line. I see them very closely related, and I, I love both of them quite a lot. Yeah, I gotta agree. I think I think um, the Iris Ukoyi is amazing perfume. I don't own it, but I've worn it several times, and it's always done. It's done a lot for me. Wow, I didn't know you didn't have that one. No, I don't. Wow, one of the few um, yeah, yeah. that I don't have. Okay, but speaking about Hermescence, yeah. I mean, this isn't Hermes. It's a Sizzly, and it is uh, one of Jean-Claude Elena's very first ever. I think this is a 1974. This is Eau de Campaign, and this is a prototypical spring perfume, very green and grassy and sour. It's got uh, oak moss and vetiver. It's got that tomato plant thing the tomato yeah. thing going on very Isn't fresh like and sparkly clean crisp a lot of uh like that transparent light thing going on in here i think it's just absolutely perfect for uh you know the crisp cool spring mornings mm -hmm. 
yeah, that's an absolute classic. Um, yeah, a lot of herbal notes. I know there's like basil and like garlic yeah. or something or mint. A lot of spices. Or, yeah. But more fresh spices than the denser, heavier ones like cardamom and cumin and yeah and uh, stuff like that. Okay. So I'm going to do kind of a... Okay, I'm going to throw one out here just because I don't want to go too long. I know you're kind of restricted with time. Um, so this is something I haven't really worn yet. Um, I've just picked it up recently and I talked about it in a video and I actually had a few people send me messages like privately and I think even comment just saying like, give it a bit more time. I'm sure you like it. I know your taste. You're going to enjoy it. Um, another Lardison fragrance. This is Zonka. Um, so I picked this up uh, with another Lardison, not Volier, but another Lardison. Um, and I remember saying that I was a little bit disappointed in the video where I talked about it for the first time or I unboxed it. I don't quite remember. And I had a lot of people saying, like, you know, just give it some time, give it a wearing. Um, and I did. I wore it a couple of days ago when we had a nicer day out. And I definitely did pick up a lot more spice than I had before. And again, it's not like super dense heavy, thick spice. Um, but I did like it a lot more uh, than I initially did. So I am really, really looking forward to this. It is very earthy. Um, green, definitely some like brown hues in there as well. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, just on I'm not very here. familiar with Zonka, is it called? I That's what I say, Zonka. I think I've tried it once. Um, so it's kind of like, from what I gather, it's kind of like Timbuktu's kind of maybe more um, flamboyant cousin, let's say. There's a bit more spice. Some of the earthiness is a little bit more pronounced. There's um, orris root or iris or something like that in here as well. There's floral aspects, there's green aspects, there's kind of like swampiness to it as well. That actually sounds very interesting. It is. It's really nice. I like it. And I, I'm definitely glad that I picked this up. And I'm definitely glad I uh, was kind of told to kind of give it another try because um, I think this will be really good for these colder uh, spring days. So like maybe the next month, it'll probably be hovering around zero, right? So maybe like towards the end of April when we get that kind of zero to 15 spring weather um maybe I'll put this one in the you know the back row or whatever for then but for these like this month or so I think I'm gonna wear this quite a bit all right awesome there you go all right so my honorary captain for my first day of spring perfume and I think this is going to be the fifth year in a row that's Lee's Mediterranean from oh. Frederick Mall, one of my favorite brands, uh, favorite niche brands. And um, so white floral, I've, I've heard this get compared to uh, Carnal Flower, which I don't really see a whole, I mean, they're white, both white florals, but, you know, Carnal Flower is very complex and rich and uh, might even be hard for, for some people to understand it, where this is a lot simpler uh, and definitely easier to wear. Carnal Flower to me is almost like a three-piece suit with your best shoes and your watch and something I would wear only a couple of times a year where this is much more comforting and, uh, you know, something you can wear with jeans and a hoodie or whatever. But um, so it's a fresh take on Lily, which I love. It's got, I don't want to say aquatic, but it does have a watery accord along with some spices, ginger specifically. Um some musks and vanillas in the dry down and it all comes together very nicely. And it's for me, it's perfect for the spring day. And it just kind of reminds me of um, walking, you know, walking the shore of uh, a, a hot tropical climate weather and uh, enjoying the peaceful evening, watching the sunset or something like that. Yeah. I got a, one of those really nice, um, premier avenue decants or samples of it kind of mm -hmm. under your recommendation and i got it a little bit late um i think we ended up getting that order like the end of september or something so it wasn't really the best weather for it so i do have it decanted out and i, I i'm gonna wear that that is definitely on my list i think like mark was saying like for mess 
you know, Hermes and Spring, I think Mall is one of those houses that I think they're really good for spring. They're good across the board, yeah. to be honest, but I think they do really a lot of florals spring. well. Yeah. I think Manny also praised this one as well, which is, you know, surprising considering it's not one that's very much talked about from the mall house. Yeah. For All right, sure. you want to go next? Yeah, sure. So I've got another repeat of houses. Um, so I'm going to grab, let's grab this one first. This is actually one of my, one of, if not my most recent, like new bottle purchases i picked up some used stuff i've done some swaps and stuff but in terms of like a new bottle which is like really rare for me nowadays i think this is the last new bottle that i picked up and i got it around christmas time um and i just have not been able to wear it because it, it is not a winter fragrance so my last two who are three you know things that i mentioned were maybe a little bit more heavier for that colder springtime this is definitely getting where we're going from spring into summer um this is come de garçon serpentine wow serpentine um sounds I, like a lizard yeah so um it's i don't know i don't know what the whole backstory is it is to it but this is just like grass it's just like green watery dewy weeds and grass it's um had some on my hand but i think it's been sprayed over but uh yeah so i tried this back in indonesia and i couldn't pick up a bottle before i left and it's getting seemingly harder and harder to find so i don't know if it's just like not getting restocked due to popularity or lack of popularity whatever but um uh, it's definitely not as um, easy to find as it used to be when it came out. Yeah, I've never smelt it, and you hardly ever hear it get mentioned. But I love the sound of that green, lush grass. Yeah, because in the springtime, the the grass here it's all wet, and it's like if you step in it, your shoe will be soaked because it takes forever to the snow to melt, yeah. and then once the snow's gone, it starts raining, and you know it could be like that for months. Yeah, this is it's so weedy. Like I love weedy accords. It's like aldehydes weeds like oh you can almost smell dandelions in here like you know like the yellow dandelions that are earthy and weedy smelling mm -hmm. oh, it's all right cool i'll definitely bring i i don't think it's gonna blow your socks off like this isn't like you know fine french perfumery but it smells really nice it's got a really nice fresh clean natural outdoorsy kind of smell to it yeah so it's different from the bunch yeah, very. Which is awesome. And All right, here's my number two, and song. I've got here, oh, this yeah. is uh, number 19, specifically Pudra. I was going to say that looks like Pudra, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I love all versions of 19, but I, you know, this is my favorite. This is the one that um, is special to me, and it's... It's got that Chanel aldehydic floral thing, specifically iris. This is iris. Um, it's wet. It's green. It's got that grassy thing. And the iris to me is very buttery and leathery. And uh, I don't know. I just love it. Like, absolutely love it. It's got that waxy. You know how Chanel does waxy cosmetics um, well? This is one of those that are definitely like in that category. Pudra. And it's the, and it's powdery. And I love powdery perfumes. So I think this is one of the reasons why I love the Pudra the most. And it doesn't yeah, get so, a whole lot of attention either. So I think that's one of the places where we definitely where our, our tastes or preferences differ. I don't like powder. In rare circumstances, I like powder. Um especially in women's fragrances or women's powdery notes. I don't like them. Um, whereas you're the opposite. Like you'll even say that it's one of your favorite like accords. Um, so I'm going to be honest. I love 19 EDT. I think it's one of the most beautiful um, kind of pre, let's say post like 1960s, pre 1990s women's scents. I think it's just 
so special. There's not really anything like it from that time. Mm -hmm. um, but the Pudra powder version has always kind of scared me. I don't know if I've genuinely tried it other than just like at the boutique kind of thing. Whereas like 19 EDT, I, I'm just madly in love with. EDP I like, but I've always preferred the EDT myself. It's definitely got that your own uh, EDT go vibe going on. But to me, it's just a little bit, it's more special. It has more nuances. I think it's a little bit more complex. Uh, it's got that green accord, which I love, you know. The more accords and nuances, the more that's going on, I find fragrances are more interesting. And that's I think that's why I like powder. It's just another accord to admire or appreciate. You with me? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was waiting for something to follow up there. Sorry. Um, so oh. just like having a look at the comments, like we're getting backed up, but a lot of people talking about, and I hope I'm not spoiling any of your picks, but um, a lot of people talking about Frederick Malgerani and Poor Monsieur. I, I'm noticing. I'm noticing. Oh, you've got the comments open. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. So my take on Geranium Poor Monsieur is I like it a lot. And it's definitely got that minty thing going on. It's got, it's got to have aldehydes in it. I'm, I, I'm not sure of the note breakdown. Hmm. But I'm gonna say it's got aldehydes, but really stands out for me is the geranium part. Um, you know, my my parents have always been into gardening and flowers and potted plants and stuff, and they have like probably a dozen geranium plants growing in their backyard. And every time I come back there. It's the leaves. The, the the leaves from the geranium plant is what gives it its smell. I don't think the flower has a scent at all. It's the green leaf. Yeah, I think and yeah, I think you're right. It's the yeah, because they're they've it's got, got like, this fuzzy, green. almost herbal thing going on, the leaf. Yeah. And when I smell geranium poor monsieur, it takes me right back to my parents' backyard, like every single time. So it's a nice memory for me, and I do enjoy it. Which reminds me. Those irises I gave you last year, they should start sprouting any time. Dude, those irises died. Yeah, they, they grow every year. They got all brown and, like, diseased. Yeah, no, it, once they, they'll, they'll die. <laughs> once you plant them, they'll die, and then next year, they'll come up. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that, but it's yeah, good to I know. I thought about that. Anyways, um... Okay, so I'm going to break it up. I'll, I'll break up these two. So you know my next one's going to be Comme de Garçon. And, of course, what else could I not mention but 1932. Okay. Um, I, uh... So we've kind of talked about this before. Like, of the kind of floral green fragrances from the line... Um, Bel Respiro, Rue Cambon, um, 32, um, you know, there's like four or five that have that kind of green floral, uh, you know, notes and, you know, accords to them. Um, this one's my favorite. 1932? Yeah, 1932 is my favorite. Uh, I don't know, it was just kind of like I tried it and... I loved it, and I'm just going to, I don't know, this is definitely a staple. I picked up a bottle. Again, it was kind of late. I think it wasn't, I didn't get this until like October or something, so I didn't have an actual chance to, to really wear it, but mm -hmm. kind of maybe 10 degrees from now when it gets up, you know, permanently, I'm going to be wearing this like weekly kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. I like that a lot as well, and I think it's a great spring and even transitioning in this summer fragrance, it's got uh, citrus. And I pick up a lot of jasmine from that. And I almost find it like, uh, let's say, 31 Rue Cambone, a simpler, uh, easier to wear 31 Rue Cambone. It's got, uh, I believe it's iris and patchouli as well. And it's got kind of this, this mushroomy, I think this from the iris, given that this rooty, mushroomy, almost moldy, thing going on i'm not sure if you get that sounds kind of bizarre but mushroomy but in a fresh way in this yeah oh i don't know i've never even thought of that so i i don't know you just kind of like 
blew my circuits in this one. I don't know. <laughs> I thought I knew this one pretty well, but mushroom, yay. I don't know. I don't know. You've just kind of thrown me for a... For Maybe a you'll pick it up, like, if you're wearing it in the summertime. I love it, though. I love it. I, I do get a bit of powderiness, like I, I totally admit, but I get tons of iris. Bit of sweetness, may something fruity in there, maybe, but not like too too fruity. I don't know what it is. Peach, I know Chanel use a lot of peach, don't they? Yeah, incense. There's probably some incense in there as well. But yeah, I love it, and I just it's one of those things like in Canada when when you get a summer fragrance or when you buy one or it arrives or whatever in October, you've got like six or seven months to wait to wear it, right? yeah so that's kind of where i am with this one it, it kind of looks like this has turned into the chanel show <laughs> and i'm gonna add one more to it but i assure you there's some guerlain in here as well and these aren't in any kind of specific order oh 18 that's 18 and i think this is one of the hidden gem gems of the collection to me 18 is um, it's definitely ambretti. It's got that musk, that vegetal musk. But to me, it's got a lot of spicy rose to it. Um, in the opening, it's got this soda fizzy, almost like a grappa or, or a tonic vibe. Uh, I get a lot of spices. And it feels like almost patchouli. And in a sense, when I wear this, I get a little bit of portrait of a lady from it rose and patchouli i'm just trying to pull it up on my fragrantica to have a look at the note so I, i'm gonna be honest and we've talked about this before yeah like i struggle with that one i have never i've tried over and over and over and over and i still don't i can't say i dislike it but i don't enjoy it it's like my least favorite of the lays exclusives Wow. So I don't well, know. I'm just trying to pull it up again just to get the notes, but it's really hard to find on Fragrantica, of course. Well, we're all different, but to be honest, I prefer this over Portrait of a Lady. What? It's just something when I wear it's like I enjoy every single second of it. Wow. Um, I remember it being very sweet. Um, it, it does have a little bit of sweetness, but it's definitely not sugary sweet. It's almost like uh, dried fruits. You know the sweetness you get in Eagle East? It's like plums, dried plums, or... Uh, I'm not overly familiar with Eagle East. I'm not East, sure but... where the sweetness is coming from, but it's not. It's definitely not candy floss or bubblegum sweetness. Yeah, dry fruits don't sit well with me for some reason. I don't know. I've struggled with that one for a long time. Um, maybe I'll come around to it. Like, it's probably been a long time since I've tried it. But um, I, I, I've just never been able to warm up to it, honestly. Um, dry fruits, uh, what is it? Like, I think kind of Serge Luton's destroyed uh dried fruit notes for me because they use it and there's some fragrances i really love from serge lutals but the ones that have the dried fruit notes like rb yeah i knew you were gonna say rb because that is like full-on sweet dried fruits yeah it's like eating a you know a fruit cake or something it's like oh i don't know next time we're in toronto i'll pick up a sample maybe i'll see something i've never seen before but it's never never spoken to me so to say all right no worries it's all good okay so how many more do you have i've got two more two more okay so um i've got two but i don't want to i said you said you had to go pretty sharpish at 5 30 right yeah okay so let's see how this goes um so another comme de garçon fragrance uh i picked this up from a friend on facebook um, shout out to uh, Anthony Fragrance Review. He actually is on YouTube, but he's got a pretty small channel, um, which is cool, though, because he keeps it pretty real. This is um, Monocle uh, sent to Laurel, uh, which is interesting because this had never really come up on my radar. 
when it was just um, Laurel and Hinoki, I was just so madly in love with Hinoki. I never even really, I just like spray it and like, yeah, it's all right. And like, ah, Hinoki, I love you kind of thing. Um, and then a couple years after I tried them, uh, Sugi came out, which is also in this series, but it's number three. And I went nuts for it. I absolutely love Sugi. It's amazing. I need a bottle, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then, yeah, like my friend on Facebook was selling it and he was offering it up for super cheap. And he said, he'd give me a good price ship to Canada. So I was like, you know what? Let's do it. I took it. I got it. And I was like, wow, I can't believe I kind of slept on this for so long, even though like it's, it's similar to a few things. It gets compared to French lover. It gets compared to Yatigan. It gets compared to, um, I think like Italian Cypress, there's a few things I've heard it compared to, but it's not, oh, someone's at the door. It's definitely not, uh, you know, that similar to them, essentially. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you wore that the last time we, we met up. And was that that spicy, crisp vetiver? That's it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, yeah, you tried it in the truck on the way to Toronto or whatever. and I you, you, I you thought it smelled great. Like and, it. you know, yeah, it, it did kind of remind me of, uh, some other great perfumes. I can't remember what it was that I, I, I said it. Was it Fahrenheit? No, I didn't say Fahrenheit. You Yeah, now that you mention it, you did say something that kind of threw me for a loop again, and I kind of had to think about it. And I think I ended up in the, in the end kind of going like, yeah, I can totally see that. But I don't remember what it was now, because that was probably like two or three months ago. Yeah. All right. Just looking at the comments here, Robes says he's going to do a top 50 panty dropping combination set or list for us he's, he's working on a bunch of lists um yeah that's do you want to tell them what you said you wanted to do for the topic of our video today when i said what well, you said what do you want to do and i was like how about spring sense and then what did you reply i with? can't remember we we talked so much shit it's like it's just literally just talking and bullshit <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to go through my messages again, it was really. Like, let's do like the top 10 best fragrances to get blowjobs in the springtime. <laughs> yeah, in certain cities. In that's certain <laughs> cities. And it just kept growing. Like we just add like an extra, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, part of the, the, the fragrance title. But yeah, I thought that was funny. Yeah, it was just getting dumber and dumber as we went along. Okay, All right, got I've got it. a girl on here, and it's yep. uh, one that, you know, doesn't get a whole lot of talk, and it's definitely not one of the most popular or famous ones. Um, it's from the, the Aqua Allegoria. This is Lee's Solea. Oh, okay. And so every year, Guerlain releases a, a mm. new Aqua Allegoria. They might discontinue one or two in order to release a new one. This year they've released three, which sound really interesting. I haven't smelt them yet, but we have Coconut Fizz. Shit, now I forgot the other two. <laughs> um, doesn't matter, but did I say this is my favorite one? It is. Uh, so the Aqua Allegorias are... They, they seem quite simple, but there's a lot of complexity to them. They're fresh, and they're kind of like Eau de Cologne's meat, whatever note is listed on the title so this one's obviously lily and uh it's got white florals yellow florals uh some creamy sandalwood it's it's quite woody it's fresh and what i love about this it's got this this sawdust this woody sawdusty thing going on so it's a combination of uh sweet lily and vanilla and a chainsaw just ripping through a huge block of sandalwood. Nice, nice. That's almost a... almost the way Tam Dao is. You know, Tam Dao's got that sawdust, the woodworking um, sandalwood accord. That's what this is. So I thought I'd bring this up just because it doesn't get any mention. I don't see anybody talking about it. And, you I know, it can be, it can be had for really cheap. I, I'm going to guess about $50 Canadian on discount shops. Yeah, you there I think the thing is they do so many and they discontinue them like nothing. They introduce them like nothing. Yeah. I'll admit there's a lot of shitty ones that aren't even worth 
you know, the attention, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of good ones. Somebody's saying here, Pampaloon, Pampaloon, however it's at, I love Pampaloon. It's, yeah. it's whatever it's, you know, for $50, I would pay three times that much just for what, what it brings me. Yeah. I, I always said Pampaloon, but I don't know, whatever. But yeah, I always liked that. And I liked, I got one and then I ended up swapping it, but I really liked it. But this woman offered me a really good swap. Um, uh, it was the one with like the green, the green citrus. Herba Fresca. What's that? Herba Fresca. No, no, not that. It was something more recent. L Lemon Verde. I think that might be it. Yeah. And she offered me a really good swap for it and I couldn't really refuse it. So I took it. But, you know, what I got from her was really cool, but I did really like it. I think it's a line that if you can get them for that 30 U.S., 50 Canadian mark. Yeah, I wouldn't pay more than that. Cause you can definitely find them uh, heavily discounted. And what I really like them else for, for is after a shower, just to put on something fresh and light or, you know, maybe yeah. before bed, if you feel like wearing something without uh, putting on something obnoxious. Yeah, I think that's when I wore Limon Verde the most, for sure, yeah. But I, I do like them a lot. All right, do you want? Do you have time to do a couple more? Yeah, keep going until okay. uh, we got to go. Okay, so this one, um, I'm not. I'm putting this last, but this would probably be more like first, because I, I like this, but it doesn't really have much on the others that I picked. This is a, a quirky, unusual, loud... Um, daring um, springtime fragrance that doesn't get much mention. That's from a house that doesn't doesn't get much mention. Um, I actually had this brought over from Indonesia with like my sister in law when she came over last year. Um, I reviewed this when I was in Indonesia, and I just kept thinking about it over and over and over. But I didn't want to splash out for a new bottle. This is um. What is it? Paris Monte Carlo. Yeah, Paris Monte Carlo, uh, Rose de Taif. So this essentially smells like, and Eugene, I'm sure you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, this smells like one of those big old citronella candles that, you okay. know, your parents burn in the backyard when you were a kid kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely like, there's some geranium in here. There's some rose in here. Um, some very familiar notes that kind of work together to do something that I've never really smelled before in perfume. Um, I'm not familiar with it. I've never smelt that or anything from that line, actually. This is the only thing I've ever tried from Paris Monte Carlo. Um, and I don't think I've ever brought this when we've met up, to be honest. Um, it's not like I, I know it's not like a masterpiece or anything, but it's something that's it's big and loud and strong and daring and it's easy to wear. It's easy to pull off. Definitely more of like a maybe more of a night out or, you know, something like that rather than wearing to work. Like if you wore this to work, people would probably be like, you know, evacuating the office kind of thing. Yeah, um, it's kind of happened to me the other day at work, which is funny. I don't know if you were back on Instagram by then, but I don't know. People were walking around my office at the library, like trying to find this chemical odor. And I was like paranoid that it was my perfume. You know, just looking at the bottle, it looks uh, Middle Eastern. And right away, I, I kind of think of Rose de Arabi. And I'm not sure if they're related at all, but um, a very woody uh, vanillic rose. This one, um, it is very Middle Eastern looking, but no, there's this definitely not like that. It's like citrus. Um, I'd say there's little, if any, sweetness in this, to be honest. Um, it is okay. I've got the um, I found the, the other uh, aqua allegorias we we're talking about, and the other one is ginger picant. Oh, I don't know that one at all, which I like ginger a lot as a spice. But I can't, I, I can't recall too many fragrances with ginger as, you know, the headlining note. No, I can't really think of them either. I'm not a huge ginger fan. Well, this on Mediterranean has ginger in it, doesn't it? That's right. But it's, you know, it's a spice in the background. It's, I don't know any perfumes that have, you know, the main theme of ginger. 
And the other aqua allegoria is Flora Charisia, Cher Charisia. I'm, I'm not sure I'm feeling that one because I'm just picturing like very sweet cough syrup. Uh, knowing Terry Wasser, this one's going to be very sweet. But I haven't tried it yet. So, But Coconut Fizz sounds really interesting to me. I think I've seen that come up. Like, you know, in, in Facebook groups and whatnot, but yeah. Okay, so I've got one more, my last one. Yeah, go for it. And I, I did say I'm not looking for heavier, denser fragrances for spring, but, you know, on those cold, this would be something uh, good for with those cold, damp, you know, spring mornings or evenings. And it's one of the latest from... Carolyn, this came out last year. This is Musk Noble, and I reviewed okay. this recently. And Another this is more to me about rose than it is musk. Uh, it's got some leather in here and some spices, and it's the, the softest from the Absolutes line, like mm -hmm. completely soft. And it reminds me of Lipstick Rose from Mull, but it's definitely less, less fruity, less sweet, less feminine. It's more woody. You know, I was wearing this the other day, and I do like it. It's got that lipsticky, waxy thing that Chanel does so good, and I, I enjoy so much. And I was wearing it the other day, and my wife's like, "Ooh, what are you wearing? Like, this smells so dirty." And and I was like, "Really? I I didn't get that at all." And like, once she said it, I think I almost like appreciated a little bit more, or gave it a little bit more respect, and. You know, I for something that maybe I did, I wasn't able to pick up before. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so this is something I wear, you know, on a heavier spring day. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily something to keep me um, fresh or on a warmer warmer spring day. Yeah, I, I yeah exactly, and that's kind of where this comes in, like. This isn't what I'd really wear typically in the springtime, but for just because of the big, huge citrusy opening, um, yeah. definitely why I'd wear this for, you know, a nighttime spring fragrance or whatnot. Beef curtains. I got some Dakotas, dude. 30% off at Mark's Work Warehouse. What's that? Beef curtains asking me what kind of boots I got. Oh, were you looking for boots? Yeah, I was saying earlier that I, I was picking up some work boots. Oh, I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I went for a haircut and I got some work boots. Oh, right. But it was between two. It was Dakotas, and I don't remember the other line, but you know they were they're they're the exact same pair I'm wearing right now, which are comfy and they're the wide the wide foot. But I've got some other things here, just some honorable mentions. I've got Cologne de 68, which is a very fresh, citrus, aromatic, lots of herbs and spices. Um, almost like they took uh, L'Enceinte de Guerlain and turned it into a fresh cologne. It's got a lot of vanilla and, and almost like a chocolatey, a sweet eau de cologne. I tried it so many times, but it's never, it's never grabbed me, to be honest. Okay, I've got here, this is a, a dirtier spring scent. This is um, Fleur d'Oranger, which is orange okay. blossom, like a, a hairy armpit, you know, very... I've never really tried that. Sorry? I've never really tried that one. It's a Maybe very floral creepy. with, uh, I'm going to say cumin in it, because it does have that, that armpit accord going on. I have got for the spring, this is, I think this is a vintage... Cristal Eau de Toilette. Nice. Which is green, grassy, vetiver, oak moss, uh, very crisp, clean. Almost reminds me of just uh, snow melting on on, on uh, spring day. Yeah, I love that. I, I absolutely love Cristal as well. And I'm not sure how you feel about this one. I've got some lotion on my hands and it's rubbing off on my balls. And I can't stand that. But I've got... Cedar Sombach from the Hermescence, which is a pissy, woody jasmine. It's also got that that soft, creamy, uh, almost sawdusty sandalwood in the base. 
I know you weren't really keen on the latest Hermescence. Yeah, I found them. That's so my favorite. From the last three that were released, that's my favorite. Uh, I, 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 I'm not really feeling the Mer Eglin Eglantine. It's not Murray enough for me. It's not dark enough. It's it's very fresh. It's fresher than uh, something you know what I expect from a fragrance called Mer Mer Eglantine. Right. So I wasn't feeling that. You know the uh, what's the other Hermescence that came out? The, the, the one. one. Agar Ben. Yeah. You know, I, I want to like it more than I actually do. Uh, I just find it like I even, it's not specifically about oud. It's more about smoky burning wood chips, which I'm okay with, but it's got this sweetness that I can't get past. Uh, and I don't even know where it's coming from. I found but, just to be so light and ghostly. Like, I, I don't know. Um, I've had like the official samples, like the really big, like are they 3.8 mil or something? They're really big. Like you right. get two or three wearings, like generous wearings. And I just, I don't know. It maybe reminded me a bit of like Suntel Masoa, which is just like so light and airy. Like you don't even really feel like you're wearing anything, but for even me, lighter than Masoa. For me, Masoa is the lightest from the line. It's, completely transparent and lightweight i myself struggle with that one See, i don't I struggle agree. with the, the the three newest ones i think their their performance for me is excellent and i'm not really uh finicky on performance on uh you know projection long i don't really care for that 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 means very little to me uh so much more than the actual scent itself but uh you know if you if you've just taken a shower, put on some fresh clothes and spray these on, they last all day for me, literally hours and hours and hours, a full work day. So I, I don't have a problem with the Hermescence performance. I, I like it just the way it is. To me, they're tweaked perfectly. I don't like uh, loud, obnoxious fragrances where everyone else smells me. I want to be the only one that smells myself, to be honest. Uh, something in my immediate area, it's good enough for me. and. Um, you know, I, I hear all the time, oh, it doesn't perform. It's not worth the money. Well, I guess that's kind of everyone else's. It's everybody's own opinion, but it's never yeah. been a concern for me. I, I've seen, like, just in the last couple of weeks, like, I've been seeing it for years, but I've seen, like, someone saying, I don't know, something ridiculous, like, they're like, oh, um, I got a bottle of, like, uh, um, carnal flower, and it lasts, like, 30 minutes on me what's going on it's like dude it's either fake or you're trolling or you just don't know what you're talking about kind of thing like i and i know it can play tricks on you like it's hard to keep a close eye on your fragrance but there's some things like masoa that i genuinely love but i have hard time keeping track of but i know it's kind of there just kind of going back and forth and there's things like you know carnal flower whatever it was this guy was talking about where i have to be self-conscious about wearing it on the bus because i'm worried the like you know 40 people are just gonna like get off because i'm <laughs> you know stinking the place up yeah i gotta agree with you i i say it absolutely drives me nuts those conversations it doesn't mm -hmm. last on me oh it's gone in 20 minutes you know fragrances aren't created to disappear like that they're created they last all day you might not be able to smell it yourself but they're there and it's almost like your your body almost protecting you from blowing your nose out like you know not to be rude and crude but let's take going to the bathroom for example <laughs> you, you go to the bathroom and you drop a deuce and if you're in there for a long time like me you know the smell goes away <laughs> The smell is really still there because somebody come in five minutes later and say, oh, my God, what the hell is that stench, right? So just because I can't smell it doesn't mean it's gone, <laughs> right? Okay. It's a self-defense mechanism your nose has, oh, right? Man. Does that make any sense? It does. In a So just because you way. cannot smell your perfume does not mean it doesn't last, Something's wrong with your nose. 
or not necessarily that something's wrong with your nose. Your your self, uh, the, your defense mechanism is probably stronger than most other people's. Yeah, yeah. Getting a new smell, you're picking up a new smell is much more sensitive than a smell that's been on you or with you for a long time. Yeah. That's why people, when they come to your house, like, well, your house smells like blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I never noticed exactly because your house smells like your house yeah and, you yeah. know like you just like, even like you know when i was in indonesia like i remember arriving for the first time and like the doors opened and just like all these weird strange exotic smells hit me for the first time and i kind of was conscious of it for a couple of days weeks whatever and then like years later when my friend came to visit they're like it smells so weird here i was like no, it doesn't, because I'm yeah. so used to it. Like, I don't know. It's it's just it's really interesting for sure. Our neighbors are, I think they're West Indian, and they use a lot of spices in their cooking. And when I come home from work in the evening, I can smell it outdoors, like on my driveway. I can smell what they're cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, and to them, there is no smell to their house when they walk in. They're used to it, right? Yeah. But when yeah, I walk yeah. in there, it's like a sledgehammer to the head. For it's just sure. so strong and and thick and rich and so that's kind of you know fragrance is the same way it's no different i think people are just expecting way too much from their fragrance you know it's not like you can turn your performance on and off like you know like a gas pedal you want to go faster down, down the highway you press the gas pedal. you can't do that with fragrance it's, it can only do so much for you um you know, there's definitely ways to improve your performance. I say drink a lot of water, moisturize, uh, maybe exercise. <sighs> you know, all things that'll help. Uh, where are you spraying? Are you spraying right? Like, I never spray here. No. Everything I spray is underneath my shirt. That way the clothes will trap some of my fragrance as well. And you have, this is where I basically spray in this in this area. And you have these large muscles here. When your body heats up, the, the perfume jumps off of your skin, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got these really big muscles right here. Well, I don't, but <laughs> I've got layers of fat. But when my body heats up, you know, the, the, the oils in the perfume heat up as well. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. They yeah. pop off your skin. But Spray when you've got perfume the... here, you know, your, 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 your perceptors are protecting themselves, right? It's a defense mechanism, so... Yeah. You can't constantly be smelling the, the perfume. You know, it's just going to go away. But when I wear it here, it goes away and it comes back and it just kind of plays peekaboo here and there, here and there. And when I bend over to pick something up, like as I'm, you know, going down, there's that, that waft of air that I pick up. Or if I go into a different room, you know, I can notice my perfume. If I go outside, I can notice my perfume. But I can't smell my perfume 24-7, you know. It's not something yeah. that I smell <clears throat> if you set a stop clock and it's like I'm constantly smelling my perfume. No, it comes it comes and goes. We're getting a, yeah. a little bit off the track here. but Yeah. Do you have a couple minutes to do some uh, comments? Yeah, I'm, I've totally showed all my bottles here. I've got way more yeah. than the five that we agreed All right, go upon, through but... some comments. I've been kind of scrolling through and just watching the general insanity um, All right, what's going on? Anything interesting? Um, lots of poop jokes. Um, no, it's funny. It's just typical stuff. All right, um, awesome. Well, that's what the Whack Pack's all about. We're here to, you know, have fun at the same time and and enjoy uh, our fragrances. So I noticed a um, uh, fragrance review who I mentioned before, who I bought several of my bottles off, is active in the comments. He's the one that hooked me up is with that this. James? Yeah. Um, I'd say go check out his channel. He's a really cool guy. He's got great taste in music as well. Um, I know him personally. He's a solid guy. Go check out his channel. Um, he's, yeah, he's got solid taste. Great guy. Great reviews. Great nose. Um, but yeah, uh, check him out. Um, so yeah, dude, let's do some comments. Let's do some. Uh... Oh, hang on. There's let's since we're we're giving shout outs to reviewers. There's a new a new channel that's just recently come out, and I want you guys to go and check it out and hit him up. I think it's called Smells Fishy or something. And uh, 
he's all about you know calling out the doofuses and fragcom and uh, he's got some really funny and interesting content if you're easily offended don't even bother but if you like what you know you see in the, the whack pack community here i think you'll definitely enjoy uh smells fishy fishy smells or smells fishy do you have a video that curtains, you if you're here dr drop a link to his channel because i know beef curtains has commented on this stuff before okay and it's absolutely say, hilarious if you could guide us to a video where we could find a comment and then therefore track him down that would be appreciated but yeah somebody drop a link to his his channel i think it's smells fishy two names What's this? Dave or the Red Nose Sociopath? He calls out a lot of people. I think some Kovacs just dropped the link here. Okay. Yeah. Fragrance review Anthony saying um, smells fishy is hilarious. Okay. Absolutely yeah. Absolutely hilarious. Guys, go subscribe to his channel. I think he's only got like 50 subs right now. Uh, but so I'm like, really hoping that he's going to put out some more content. Does, does he have like content on his channel or he goes to other channels? No, no. He's got like about, I think right now he's got five videos posted. Oh, no way. Yeah. His channel has just started up and I think it's like, you know, the aftermath of the Tsunumi I, I created a couple of weeks ago. Uh, his channels, you know, got rise out of that. What's up, my main man, douchebag, Jonathan Zambrano? He's calling <laughs> us douchebags. <laughs> the clone clown. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. The... So is he just taking other people's videos and then... Yeah, absolutely. He, he incorporates other people's videos and he calls them out on their bullshit. Okay. I think you went on a Max Forte rant. Okay, you've got, yeah, because you kind of mentioned this as we were setting up before the video went live. And you're like, yeah, it smells fishy or fishy something or other. And I was like, no, no, I don't know him. I don't think we talked about that for whatever reason. But we've got to, yeah, I'll be done in a moment. Yeah, just looking at the JPEGs here. I don't know what the hell is going on here. Give them a give them a look when we're done here. You'll get a good howl. So this is he's probably a veteran. Like he probably knows his he way. He definitely around. knows what he's talking about. He's been around. So they very well could be watching right now as someone that we've known for years. Could possibly be. I have no cool. clue who it is. He doesn't show his face. Awesome. It's just I, his voice know. dubbed over. He's got other reviewers talking and he's taking shots at them and calling him out on his bullshit. I think he called out uh, Mr. Smelly. He called out Max Forte. Uh, I called out Daver. I don't know. He's got a beef with Daver. I, I don't necessarily know. I can't remember what is. I love Daver, you know. I got no problem with Daver. I think he's a great, great human being. We chat, you know, the odd time. He's done a couple of big favors for me by just kind of rerouting perfumes and shipping them over to Canada. So that was really cool. I know he's done the same for you as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I Daver's great, but um, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get into it. Yeah, all right, so... I think that's it basically here. I've got nothing else to show. I've got actually one more and that's a uh, tower, a fruity rose, but I don't, I don't wear my towers very often cause I've got about four or five of these and they all leak. Like, I don't know what it is, the rubber stop or something, but every time I just pull the cap off, I lose like half a mil to a mil. You know, they just kind of like pour down my hand and it really upsets me. So I, you know, until he settles this, what if he's got a problem, I won't be buying any more towers, unfortunately, because I do love his perfumes, but um, not enough to be spending, what is it, four bucks a mil and have a, a leaky bottle? It's yeah, just, they're about that now, $4 a mil. It's crazy. 
But if you ever see me posting a tower for sale, don't buy it because by the time it gets to your house, the bottle will be drained, be completely empty. You'll have a nice smelling box, but there won't be any perfume left in the bottle. I actually did a, a haul, it was a haul or a seasonal video. I can't remember. And when I pulled a cap off of my Lair du Desert, like I literally got like, yeah, I shot up and, and, and burned me in the eye. I kind of remember that now that you say that. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy, but it was great that I got it live. Like it wasn't set up or anything. I just pulled the cap off and this, you know, a mill of fragrance just jumped up and like soaked me right in the eye. I was like, ah. Yeah, because I think famously he like, what's the word? Like he does his own capping. So he has yeah, a machine. He does all his production. Crimps the cap. So it could just be like, I don't know. Faulty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got, what is the other one? Incense Rose or something I have, and that's leaky as fuck. That's probably the worst one. Uh, I've got the leather one. What's yeah, the leather um, one? I like that a lot, actually. The petrol um, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lone Star? Lone, Lone Star, Star, that's Memories. right. Well, should we wrap it up? Yeah, where can I buy discounted Guerlain? Literally anywhere. Any discount shop has them. Uh, you're not going to get the exclusive for discount, but, you who, know. Who was that? Somebody's asking where they can buy discounted Guerlain. Yeah, I think if you look around, they do come up. So, um, Fragrance Review, um, our friend Anthony found, uh, um, I'm not going to say what because I want a bottle. I'll tell you, Eugene, after the video is done. But he found some exclusives for some really good prices and i'm hoping i can grab a bottle before they're gone awesome well i gotta say honestly there's not a whole lot of things that i have on my radar other than queer intents coming yeah. from the new absolute line so that'll be awesome when we yeah. when that comes out we're definitely going to go downtown and possibly live stream and you know how we we do for the gear lawn events i'd like to do the same for that launch mm -hmm. i think it'd be great yeah for sure all right, everyone. It was uh, great chatting. And uh, I guess we'll see you all soon. Yeah. Chris, do you have anything you want to? No, I'm good. Yeah, something um, coming up on your channel or? <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, probably just some live streams. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe when things calm down at school a little bit, I'll, I'll have a bit of time. But uh, I don't know. It's just been hectic. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so I'm doing placement at you know, I'm doing my internship and that's going to finish soonish. So yeah. I'll have a bit more time then, which is good. Um, but uh, somebody asking if I really love GNR. I, I don't listen to GNR anymore. I used to like, I don't listen to music now. You know, I don't have time to sit down and turn on a record or if I'm in my car and it comes on, I'll definitely listen to, I was a huge GNR fan. Um, slash axel all those guys even buckethead you remember the guy that would come on stage and he'd have he'd wear a bucket of an empty bucket of kfc on his head wow you know him wow yeah crazy. yeah 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 he was i love i love gnr yeah um henry rollins i loved like dearly he was one of my he just had so much angst in his music right and i totally related with uh henry rollins um in a period of my life uh, Rage Against Machine was huge for me as well. A lot of angry, intense music that, uh, you know, we'd be in the bars and clubs every single weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. And if there was a mosh pit happening, it was, you know, my buddies and me were the, in the central of the mosh pit uh, waiting for a bouncer to come in so we can, you know, drop some boots or whatever. <laughs> Being total punks, right? Okay, I guess that's it. We're totally off a of topic here, and I've got a bunch of people waiting for me. Yeah. So really glad everybody tuned in. Guys, Crystal, we'll talk soon, and yeah, uh, everyone else, sure. we'll see you again soon. Okay, Bye. later.